and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And as promised, we have Thanksgiving coming up very soon. Let's see, today is whatever. This will be posted on Friday, and it'll be like a week from Thursday, I believe, or anyway, two weeks from Thursday, so, somewhere around there. It's really close. And everybody, you know, this is a big wine holiday. I love this holiday. I love it when people come in the store and ask what wines to go with Thanksgiving. But I know a lot of you already have it in your mind what you might want to drink. This show is for some of you who are my, might want a few suggestions or to check out a couple of wines that might be a possibility for Thanksgiving. Uh, one of the most popular wines at Thanksgiving time is Pinot Noir or Gamay or Pinot Noir or Gamay are the number one choices for Thanksgiving. I also think there are a couple others that work really well with Thanksgiving, but we're going to look at a Gamay, not a Gamay, excuse me, used to be called, <laughs> sorry about that, used to be called a Gamay Beaujolais, I don't know if you remember that, I think Behringer had one, and Jay Lore had one, a couple other guys did a Gamay Beaujolais, well just, they were not Gamay, so a lot of those guys just quit making them because the FDA said, hey, you can't call it a Gamay because it's not a Gamay. Well, Jay Lohr did some research, sent the grapes to UC Davis, and they found out that it is a grape called Val de Guy. And that is the first one we are going to try. The Jay Lohr 2018 Val de Guy. That is the name of the grape. Uh, from Aurora Seco, Monterey County, California. They call it Wildflower. This rolls in at $13. So there you go. There's the label. Wildflower. Now this is an interesting wine. I used to this is a, this fluctuates a lot, which you know, hats off to the winery. They go, they are vintage driven. They don't have a formula dialed in. So they all do a little bit of this, tweak a little bit of that, a little here, there to make it taste the same every year. So uh, uh, vintage variation means a lot to me. Uh, sometimes they don't always come out exactly as good as the last vintage. In fact, a couple of vintages goes, I really didn't like it. But I have liked it many, many times. So we're going to try the 2018 J. Lohr Val See how it's showing. I think this would be a great turkey wine. Let's check it out. So we get a little tobacco, a little bit of plum. Actually quite a bit of raspberry coming through. Like plums, raspberry, and a splash of blackberry. Let's see what we get on the palate. So it's pretty expressive on the nose. Not... There's an interesting like bark component coming through as well. Let's see what we get on the palate. Pretty good acidity, which isn't bad with the meal because there's a lot of savory elements in a Thanksgiving meal. You got the stuffing, you got the potatoes, you got the gravy, you have all that stuff. Good acidity. The raspberry component comes through big time. Uh, this does remind me of a gamay to a certain extent. Nice raspberry blackberry expands on the mid palate into the finish. This needs food. This is not a wine I would sit on the couch and just enjoy. I, mean, I might. I mean, you know, it depends on how I'm feeling. High acid. Nice bright tones in the fruit. Nice bright fruit. You almost get a little cranberry, maybe pomegranate component coming through with the blackberry and the raspberry. I mean, it's $13. I think that's a really good price for a you know, if you have a lot of people over, you don't always want to spend a ton of money. This is just a nice little food red. And it's drinking pretty good right now. Has like a fruit skin texture that comes through a little bit. I'm liking it. It's not the best I've ever seen from them with this wine. But I like it. I think it would be a great food one. I think it would go well with a turkey meal. And what an interesting uh, little conversation at the table, right? Wildflower Val de Guy. What the heck is that? You talk about the whole Gamay Bouchelet thing. It would be a fun conversation at the table. I'm going to go I'm gonna go B-minus on that. I think it's a good wine, a good food wine. 
might be C plus, B minus. It's better than average, but not as good as I remember it in the past. Uh, definitely have this with food. I think it's, yeah, good, good turkey wine. Let's move on. This is the uh, 2017 Argyle Pinot Noir Willamette Valley, Oregon. Argyle's been around a long time. Uh, this wasn't at $24. Stealth enclosure, screw cap. There you go, guys. Pinot Noir is just a big hit. Now, Pinot does not have a lot of tannins, and tannins can be a problem sometimes with turkey and some of the elements of Thanksgiving. So, that's why Pinot Noir works really good. The legs are on the outside of the glass, on face. Now, I didn't talk about the color on the belt again. Sorry about that. I missed that. Maybe I'll show you that later. But the color on this is very, very light, which is what you'd expect. Perhaps from a Pinot Noir, it means it's true Pinot Noir, no Syrah added. <laughs> but Argyle's a good play, 24 bucks, reasonably priced Pinot Noir. Let's see what we get on the nose. A little challenged, a little challenged. Tiny hits of root beer, a little bit of bark coming through. I get a little bit of beauty bark coming through. Get some strawberry component and some cherry, but not hugely expressive on the nose. Yeah, a little bit of cherry, a little bit of strawberry, a little bit of beauty bark coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. Really, that beauty bark kind of tobacco thing is really there with this one. Um, definitely a strawberry cherry component coming through. This is a fairly thin Pinot Noir, but what I like about it is I like that kind of savory element on the back side, that kind of you get a little bit of that tobacco, a little bit of beauty bark. I'm, I'm surprised. This just has a tiny hit of sarsaparilla, uh, root beer, not a lot. There's a very, uh, sometimes you get a cola or root beer out of uh, certain Pinot Noirs. Uh, very, very, very light Pinot Noir. So here's a play on this one. You're either going to be really disappointed because you spent $25 or $24 bucks on a light Pinot Noir that just has a savory element, not a huge amount, not very complex. It has some good Pinot flavors. It certainly leans towards old world in style, but at the same time, it's still really light, kind of thin. And then some of you might like it because it's it's just it's going to go really well with the meal. Just saying. My personal opinion is a little too light. Uh, there's not enough complexity in this wine. Um, I'm, I'm actually kind of, I've had better Argyle vintages than this. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say for twenty for twenty four bucks you can find better Pinot Noir than this. It could be this particular vintage. It's okay. I'm gonna go C C plus. But I think for twenty four dollars I wouldn't go there. Personally, I would not go there. I think you come down to the shop, I'll find you 10 better Pinot Noirs for the same price or less. So, there you go. A little disappointed in that. Let's do a little rinse here. Better talk to my assistants. They don't recommend that 17 Argyle Pinot Noir. So this is a, a variety. I've been playing a little bit with that Thanksgiving over the last couple of years. And that is Grenache or Garnacha from Spain. I think it works really good. A lot of times it's a little bit spicy, which I think works good with the meal. This is the uh, 2016 Las Rocas Garnacha. This is from Calateud, Spain. And this rolls in at $12. There you go. Pretty cool label. Yep. I just think um, one time I just had to happen. To, I opened a lot of wines during Thanksgiving uh, for everybody to try, and we ran across a Grenache, and it went just like that. 
Everybody loved it. It was really good with the meal. So I've been playing with it a little bit. Let's see what we get on the nose. So this as well has a lot of tobacco on the nose. Slightly challenging. You get that kind of, I always say dried cardboard, but that's what I'm getting. Sorry guys. I'm not going to come up with anything else because that's what it is. Not corked. Dried cardboard, not wet cardboard. I'm getting a little bit of strawberry out of this one as well. Tiny hit of licorice, but very challenged on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Good color, guys. Like this one, solid color. Good mouthfeel. Good weight in the mouth. I get a combination of cherries and strawberry kind of together, kind of a blend of cherry and strawberry. Very savory, light tannins, but they're structured. Um, a little bit of tobacco on, in the underbelly. Oh, there's tobacco. Nice little hit of red flowers coming through up on the mid palate into the finish. The acidity is well integrated, not high acid like the Valdeghi. Good acidity though. And remember, it's only $12. That's a nice price. I think that's a nice price range. Personally, for Thanksgiving, if you're having a lot of people over. Now, if it's just my wife and I, my son maybe, and his wife, uh, or fiance, you haven't gotten married yet, we might, you know, bust out a little bit more wine. But if you have a lot of people over and you have a little $12 Grenache or Garnacha, that's perfect. And this is a nice one. I think this would go very well. You got that cherry, strawberry, uh, tobacco, barely nice and egregious acidity, light tannins, uh, just perfect for the Thanksgiving meal. Once again, I found another Garnacha that I really like and I think it's a good play for Thanksgiving. I did some research online. I couldn't find anybody that recommended Garnacha. I'm recommending Garnacha, and I'm recommending this one. I think it would be really good. So if you can find this one, seek it out. I think you're going to enjoy it with the meal. There you go. We will do another episode. I read something interesting online. I was, again, doing some research on what people think would be a good uh, wine for Thanksgiving, and somebody mentioned Sauvignon Blanc, which I have never kind of thought of Sauvignon Blanc with Thanksgiving, but we're going to review those in the next episode. I have a few Sauvignon Blancs to look at. Very picky with Sauvignon Blanc. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.